In this video, I'll be showing you how to save time, material, power, and ultimately money by being specific and selective about how you apply your backplane using a negative mask. I also have a little CTC tip in here as well for you. Hi, I'm Pete from Pain With Light, and this is Luminal to Z. Yes, size does matter when it comes to your backplane in Lumilor. Now, we spoke in a previous video that Lumilor runs off of an alternating current, okay, which consumes about one milliamp per square inch. So 0 0.001 of an amp Lumilor consumes in order to power in the lit area. So if we were to take a look at this and we have our basic training panel that you do in your instructional videos and your starter kit, that is an eight by 10 panel. Now, the only area that is lit in the eight by 10 panel is roughly about seven inches by nine inches because you need your bus bars on the side to be able to power it properly. So that leaves you with seven inches by nine inches of a lit area. So seven times nine is 63. So now you have 63 total square inches that needs one milliamp to be powered. So break that down, 63 times 0 0.001 of an amp equals 0 0.063 of an amp. So let's remember that. Lumilor takes one milliamp per square inch to be powered. You're going to have your regular square light up, traditionally. You're gonna clear it, completely done. Now it's all lit. Now time for your top coat or your design. So what you normally do is you take a positive mask and you set it on your panel that's already lit. You black out everything around it, all of the light around your design. And once you're done, you remove the masking. And the only thing that is now left is your lit area inside of your blacked out area. But all of the area that was blacked out on the outsides of it is still consuming power. It's still consuming one milliamp per square inch. So in reality, your square here is consuming a lot more amps per square inch or per the entire panel than it really should. Meaning if you're being selective about your back plane and you were to only paint the back plane in the area that you need to be lit instead of in an entire square and then blacking it all out, you're going to be saving power, time, materials, and ultimately money as well. So traditionally, you're going to be painting squares, rectangles, circles, triangles, and then putting your logo on the inside and blacking everything out. But if you start by blocking out your back plane first, this will then lower your square inches, your total square inches, within that same area using less power, using less materials, and also ultimately saving you a little bit of time as well. You have two different sets of masks. You have a positive mask and a negative mask, okay? In a negative mask, you're going to have basically the stencil, um, full stencil with the negative space removed, meaning if you have a logo that you want to paint on the inside, you're gonna have your mask, you're going to remove your logo from the mask, apply it onto the panel, paint inside of the mask, remove the outside of the mask, and what you have left is a painted logo of what you were looking for. So in that, that would be a negative mask. In a positive mask, it'd be the opposite. So instead of having the mask around it and painting on the inside, a positive mask is the inside part of that mask that you would then set on the panel and then paint around that. So when you pull it off, the actual logo itself stays bare, but everything around it is painted. So you have a positive and a negative mask. Now, whenever we get into being selective about our back plane, we want to make sure that we use a negative mask for the back plane, meaning we're going to have the entire panel or area masked up except for the logo design itself. That, those portions of the vinyl will be removed so we can apply backplane on the inside of this mask, okay, in the negative area. 
you still have edges on your back plane that need to be either sanded down, uh, scraped down, and taken off so that you don't create um, improper insulation on all of the edges of your design now. So this means we're being selective about where we apply our backplane and ultimately saving us material, power, square inches, and having less amps running the same size panel. Um, this also means that when you go to light up, only the logo itself is gonna light up. Not a square, not a rectangle, circle, anything like that. We have to black out in a later step, okay? So only the logo will light up saving you a step later of having to black out and clean anything up or do anything like that later on. If our logo, if our design has multiple designs or letters in the logo and you go to light it up, you need to make sure and understand that every single letter, every single design still needs to be connected. Meaning we need to apply little bridges between each letter, between each line or design, whatever it may be, so that the power can still get to the designated areas of each letter um, or of each shape within that design. Keeping that in mind, when we go to light everything up, wherever the conductive top coat is applied onto the surface and over a backplane with the whole system, those areas will still light. Okay, so what we need to make sure we understand to do is in a later step, I'm gonna talk about masking up the bridges that we are then gonna create right now. So, whenever you go do your light ups, those bridges that are connecting each letter, they have the full system on them, the backplane, dielectric, luma color, and conductive top coat, they will still light, but we don't want them to light. Saving us, once again, square inches, saving us power. Now applying your dielectric and luma color is going to be the same as it was before, except once again, you're going to be selective about where you apply your dielectric and luma color, okay? Traditionally before in a panel, you would have to do your dielectric over the entire panel to make sure you house your bus bar and your luma color as well over the entire panel to make sure that you give enough luma color and enough of the insulation properties that it gives off across the entire panel so that the entire panel can be properly lit and sufficient. Um, but whenever you're working with a selective backplane and only lighting up a specific logo, you don't have to apply dielectric over the entire area um, as before you only need to apply it over your back plane and just over a bit more to house your bus bar, okay? And if you're working on a smaller area, you don't need to tape off the entire area because you're gonna create hard edge lines, hard tape lines that's gonna be hard to get rid of later. So what you can do is in your Lumicolor or your dielectric, make sure you overlap your back plane by at least half an inch or an inch, okay? And feather it out to make sure that you don't have any lines or tape lines you need to get rid of later. And your phosphor or your lumicolor, you only need to apply it on the back plane area, okay? Very important. You only need to apply the lumicolor over the back plane area or over the lit area that's gonna light up later on. It's not necessary to put lumicolor extend it out as far as a dielectric and, and you know everything like that because it will not light in those areas. You only need to put the luma color on the back plane area and only where it's going to light. Okay, so you're gonna apply your dielectric where it needs to be and specifically where it needs to be. Same with the luma color, okay? And before you go to light up, we talked about the bridges before, you need to make sure that you're very precise. Well, you need to make sure that you cover up the bridges with tape before you spray your conductive top coat, okay? If you spray your conductive top coat over the entire area, everything will light up, including your design and your little bridges that you had to connect each one of the letters or shapes or lines or whatever it may be, everything will light up. You can have that work for you if you want, that's possible, but then you're going to have to black that out later in the top coat. 
and we're trying to be specific about how we light up our logo here and we're trying to minimize our square inches or um, or amps per square inch so what we're gonna do by that is take a little piece of tape and cover your bridges that connect all of your letters and all of your logos or whatever it may be in your design so when you apply the conductive top coat those areas those specific areas will not light because there is no conductive top coat carrying the current to that area so now if you take a look at it you have your logo you have your bridges that were masked up and you go to light up you remove the bridge the masking from the bridges you're going to see that it's not going to light up within those areas so technically if you take a look at it now and you, you go to clear it you're pretty much done with your logo in a sense because there's no more blacking out to do you covered up your bridges so there's no light connecting everything together and everything is actually the way you want it to be as an end result but you did it in the beginning so taking this and understanding it will help you to save the time save the materials save power which ultimately you can probably go larger of an area now because you're not utilizing the whole square of the square you're only utilizing a third or a half or a quarter of the square because you're being selective about where you're putting your back plane. So if you were to take a 12 by 12 square, which our small inverter can power, 144 square inches, okay? That small inverter can do 12 square inches by 12 square inches, great. But if you were selective about your back plane, and you knew your design was half the size of a 12 by 12 square within the design itself, essentially you could actually take that design and make it bigger by a half or so, because now, yes, the outer dimensions are, you know, two by two instead of one by one, the inside lit area is still technically one by one because you're being selective about where you're where you're putting your back plane and lighting up your logos or your design so whenever you take a look at this and you have you go to light something up you could actually do a larger area uh, because you're being selective and power a larger area with a small inverter or even larger area with a large inverter because you're not utilizing the entire square inches of that square you're utilizing a third of it or a half of it you can essentially go larger that if you want or keep it that same size and know you're not taxing your inverters and know that you know nothing's going to burn out because you're not overpowering it if you had problems with your masking or in your design or let's say you didn't you didn't uh, cover up your bridges, so you still have little light gaps in between each letter, in between each logo or design. Um, now in this step, once you've actually lit everything up, okay, and you've cleared it like you should, encapsulating clear so that it protects everything, secures the system down. If you did not have a clean um, beginning mask or let's say once again your your bridges you didn't mask up your bridges at this point you can now take your positive mask okay so you have a positive and a negative we use the negative mask to then lay on the panel and be selective about where we put our back plane we're going to now take the positive of that mask we're going to light it up do our traditional um, top coating here but in this part we're not going to have to black out much light or cover out much light the only thing we're going to be covering up are the little tiny bridges in between each letter or once again if your mask wasn't clean um, in the back plane clean uh, what i mean by that is um, if you go to apply a stencil down you put paint down and you take off the stencil it may have a jagged edge or the paint might stick to the mask and kind of rip a little bit or sometimes uh, when you go to sand off the edge it might take a little bit off sometimes when you have those things you don't have a clean logo in the end so you can now take this opportunity in the top coat stage to clean everything up okay 
Yes, you may still have to do a little bit of a top coating or blacking out to clean stuff up, but you know for a fact that you do not have the entire area, square, rectangle, circle, whatever geometric shape, you do not have that entire area lit. So you're not wasting apps in the entire system. You're being specific about it. So now you're being uh, efficient about the way you're applying your materials. And you know your system's gonna last a really long time. So if we were to take a look at the helmet and we were to light up the entire logo or logos as squares or rectangles, okay, on this helmet here, you have about eight inches, eight inches tall, okay, and by looks roughly about six inches wide. So just this part right here, just this area, would be eight inches by six inches. So eight times six is 48. So there's 48 total square inches within this area here. Multiplied by one milliamp is 0 0.001 of an amp. So at the end of the day, you're gonna have 0 0.048 amps running this section here, okay? It doesn't seem too bad on a small scale, but now that we have it all masked out, just by taking a look at this, it kind of looks like it's roughly about about half the design that we would have done before. Okay, so before we had 48 total square inches, uh, which equaled 0 0.048 of an amp. Now we're gonna have 24 total square inches instead of 48, so literally half of the amount of current that needs to be pulled in to power this. So now we have 24 square inches, which breaks down to 0 0.024 amps. Way less power, way less material, so much more efficient, just this little area is. And if you break that down across all your other ones, this entire helmet, we can actually light off a small inverter and do multiple designs and it not be taxing the inverter and it not consuming a lot of power because we were being selective about how we did our backplane. So now only our selective backplane is drawing power, saving us some time, saving us power, of course, some materials, um, ultimately can be brighter, making it, you know, um, we can go larger if we wanted to, larger than one square foot, larger than two square feet. And this is simply just by being selective about how you apply your backplane. I'm Pete from Paint With Light, and we're going to be having plenty more videos coming out from our Lumilor A to Z series. Please comment, like, and share. And as always, we'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching.